Well, a lot of people accept the idea of microevolution or the idea that populations change over time. A lot of people have trouble accepting the idea of macroevolution or the idea that new kinds of species or groups of animals evolve over time. A lot of people will say that this has never been observed. There's no evidence to verify that the actual evolution at the macroscopic level actually takes place. That entire ecosystems, that entire species actually change over long periods of time. But although this may seem to be the case, I am here to tell you today that this is not true. That although uh, perhaps macroevolution in terms of the entire ecosystem changing may be a stretch for, for most people, I would say that even that has arguably been observed, all right, as the rainforest has changed significantly over the last 400 years because of human influence. And you can see a shift in the way the, way the forest looks and behaves because of that. So even even ecosystem evolution has been observed. Imagine species evolution. And I'm here in this video to give you several examples of macroevolution to prove that this is actually science. That's not uh, guesswork here. In fact, this is all based on extensive evidence. And this is additional evidence to things we already talked about, such as anatomical evidence, including homological, analogous, mosaic, and vestigial structures, embryology, molecular biology, a comparative analysis of gene sequences and protein sequences, looking at biogeography or patterns of distribution of animals across space and time, field studies and microbiological studies that have already seen microevolution taking place as well as macroevolution taking place like we're going to talk about in this video, and the law of parsimony which basically says that the simplest explanation must be the true and evolution is the one that explains every form and function that exists in biology. Paleontological evidence and climatological evidence from the fossil record and stratification, radiometric dating, all of these different types of data have substantiated evolution extensively. But you might want to see actual evolution happening. You can see if I don't see it with my own eyes, I won't believe it. So in this video, I'm telling, here to tell you that we have seen that kind of stuff happening. Remember, though, that it's very important to remember what you mean by kind. Because if you don't define kind before you come to this video, it makes no sense. And we're going to define macroevolution as a change in the species. And that has been seen many, many times. If you need a change in genera, that's also been seen. So that's no need to fret. Evolution is a thing. So let's see how this actually works. But before we do that, let's talk about the concept of micro versus macro growth. Because it might help you understand the idea of macroevolution and microevolution as one big thing. For example, notice that the... Um, then you see the screen here is a seed of a sequoia tree. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a sequoia tree, but those things are huge. But you put that seed in the floor, it will, it will germinate into what we call a seedling, which you see here in the middle. And then that seedling will become a sapling, which is a tiny little tree which will grow over time and so forth. Now, you can actually observe this taking place over a period of a few, we a few weeks or a few days. And you'll be like, okay, I believe in this because I can see it happening. It's micro growth, right? Well, but within your lifetime, you will never be able to see this happening. You will never be able to see that tiny little sapling becoming a larger tree, and then eventually a huge sequoia, 200 feet tree, which grows over a period of, yes, thousands of years. Some sequoia trees have been marked as many as 20,000 year old trees. It's incredible. And there are a whole forest of them. Now, if you actually visit the forest of uh, National Sequoia Park, you actually see trees at all different stages of development. You will see some large trees, some smaller trees, some dead trees fall to the ground. You will see some other saplings and some seedlings and some seeds on the floor. You will see all stages of development. So you can actually see a mosaic picture of the stages of development of the sequoia tree. So would you be able to say that this sequoia tree grew even though you hadn't seen it grow? Well, of course, because you've seen the beginning of it and you've also seen all the stages uh, across the forest and although you haven't seen the sequoia tree actually grow, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to accept that it did. That's what we talk about with macroevolution. Even though we have, you cannot see major changes in, in the species across time, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. All the evidence of the growth is there. We see other species in between. We see other species in the fossil record. We see all the evidence I just mentioned. There is substantial evidence for evolution for you to know that this kind of evolution, the macro evolution is taking place. And just because you can't actually observe the whole thing because you don't live for millions of years, it doesn't mean it didn't actually happen because we have the records. We can indirectly measure evolution. 
But it, for those of you who would like to see an actual microevolution step, there is plenty of that already done in science since the 50, uh, 1950s that we actually did extensive research. Remember the cyclids from Lake Victoria and how they develop different colorations and then they prefer that coloration and that led them to actually uh, separate from each other. This is not something that we actually observed happening though. But we can replicate those kinds of things in a lab and if you get in the normal light you can develop two different kinds of fish if you put them into different environments they will develop different coloration patterns. And this is, of course, you see a lot of homology between these two fishes, you know, vertically looking at them because there are so many similarities between them. But they are two different species and they will prefer to not mate with each other. But you can also create something interesting. If you switch both populations to a monochromatic orange light, then they'll both look kind of like that. So you see you created a little bit of what is called convergent evolution, in which case here you have an analogous structure, which is the coloration pattern change developing. So this is showing you both homology and analogy happening because of evolution. In this case, the population shifted to the same look because of equal pressures from the environment. Now, now that they actually look similar to each other, more reproductive encounters will occur between the two different species because they will look more similar to each other. So that's, looks, that's interesting. They will increase hybridization between the two species because of that. But notice that's interesting too that the ones in the right will prefer to mate with the ones in the right and the ones in the left will prefer to mate with the ones in the left and crosses the, between the two we would be very rare now you could argue that this is not exactly macroevolution because even though there seems to be a preference on the type of the fish to actually have uh, sex with the ones that look like them they will not necessarily exclusively mate with the ones that look like them and so it's not necessarily macroevolution yet it's like saying that you know just because two people prefer to marry people who are white or two people were black before two people were black, that doesn't mean that they're different species. Uh, they might be different races, but they can still cross with each other. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So you may argue this is not macroevolution. All right, I'll give you that. But don't worry because there's plenty of evidence of macroevolution actually happening. And in the next video, we're going to start with plant evolution and talk about how macroscopic evidence of evolution from one species to another actually has been collected. We've actually seen it happen. I'll see you guys then.